Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. Last time we went into this warehouse and got absolutely destroyed. And to be honest, the major challenge that we were facing was our own skill. By that I'm not meaning tactics or anything or any of that nonsense. What I'm talking about is our own actual characteristics and the fact that they are, like, atrocious. Like, every single character has just truly atrocious stats minus Argenta. But they just have truly atrocious stats, they've all been lowered, things just aren't looking good for us. So, how do we fix it? Well, between episodes, some people commented in the comments and they gave me some little tips. The first one is, in here, in the tutorial, it's under injuries. Now, there were two, well, there were three types of injuries. The first is an injury. So that is, if your health drops below a certain amount in combat, you receive an injury. The second thing that happens after that is that injury, if you do not um, solve it immediately, becomes an old injury. Okay, so far we're on the same path as I was last time. The bit that I didn't get last time is if you die, you get something called a trauma. Now a trauma is not any type of injury, it is actually its own thing. And it can only be removed by actually going somewhere to rest, like going to a ship or a medical station or a healer or so on, right? But because we don't have any of those things, we're kind of stuck with it. So we're stuck with negative stats, which isn't good. The other thing we're stuck with is Adira. Should I divine on now, instead? Uh, I was wondering why it kept summoning demons. I was like, I'm sure I understand the Veil Degradation thing, and I understand the Veil Degradation thing absolutely perfectly. What I don't understand is Adira, and it's been pointed out exactly what I don't understand in... I'm trying to find the exact thing here. Is it Talents? Ah, uh, yes. So it's in here. Unsanctioned Psyker. All psychic powers used by this character have a 5% chance to trigger Perils of the Warp. Ah, also, and are resolved as if the Psyker's Psy rating was one level higher. Didn't realize that, but 5% chance to trigger Perils of the Warp. So if you think about that, um, another way of thinking of it is you, if you roll a 1 on a 20-sided die, right? As you're doing it, you will have trigger Perils of the Warp, which is not good. Now, to add on to this and make it even worse, there's also, in theory, another roll when you get to Perils of the Warp. So Perils of the Warp could, in theory, do many things, one of which is summoning demons, which is what happened to us, and it caused us many issues. Now, it could be that we roll the 5%, nothing really bad happens. We could roll the 5% and get demons. We could never roll this 5%, but this explains everything. It does also make Adira much less... Uh, or it means that we're much less likely to use Adira's um, psychic powers all the time. I also wonder whether they turned off this 5% for the tutorial area. I would think that they would, right? I'm not sure. Maybe somebody can confirm whether they got it to trigger in the tutorial, but I would be almost certain that they would try and make sure that didn't fire in the tutorial so you could actually get through it. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, so, with Adira, Dira, I kind of want a secondary thing for her to do because, I mean, the psychic staff is cool, but I would really like it if she had, you know, something that would be useful when she's not using the psychic staff. So maybe we give her, like, one of the sniper rifles? I think we could just give her the sniper rifle. I think that would be fine. And I think that that will potentially help a lot of what we're dealing with here because when she's not a... Uh, like, when we don't need her to use a psychic power, we can just have her use this, right? And that will be absolutely fine. And then when we need to, like, truly use some psychic powers to take out a ton of enemies at once, then we switch to the psychic staff. Now, the problem is this also applies to all the buff abilities. So, like, this ability here, which increases the target's dodge and parry, that also has a chance to do it, which is not ideal. Foreboding also has a chance to, to do this as well, which is, yeah, not ideal. Oh yeah, I also misread what this thing said. So this thing um, says that we gain 6% dodge, and I was thinking, oh, and then it has a lower amount of dodge it can give at 6%. 
not the case. It's, it specifically says their dodge chance cannot be lower than six. It gives us a lower level for dodge. So this is um, this is not saying that the lowest amount it can give is six or whatever the extra calculation is. All it's saying is that's now the lowest level dodge can be and it can't go into the negatives or any of that sort of stuff. And eventually once we get more stats that percentage could be like 30%, right? And it says the lowest your dodge can get is 30, which is quite useful, right? You can see how that would be useful. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything else between episodes that was brought up. There were very many things, and I've tried to get through as many as I could there. But essentially, there's a lot about this system I'm not quite familiar with yet. And uh, we're going to have to get very familiar with it very quickly. But yes, we have to leave this warehouse. Uh, I actually don't think it's the end of the world just leaving the warehouse be. I, I think that that's keep fine here. Open. I think that what... Sorry, I was just confused about who they were, but now we know. Um, yeah, I think that it seems optional-ish. Like, it doesn't see... One, two... Where's the rest of the party? Oh, they're just making their way up there. That's fine. Um, yeah, it seems optional-ish, right? It's probably something that you should do while you're on the planet, but it doesn't seem like it's... You need it to progress. Is there money to be made? Um... All right, the dead bodies are T-posing. That's um, interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to go and explore this other side, do the fight over here, and then maybe try and progress, and hopefully there's a healer at the other side. That's the best I can hope for, honestly. So we've been all the way around there. So yeah, it's just this bit of the bottom, which I've actually been to most of anyway. So it's just like this last little bit of it. Always keep your eye on the prize. Right, quick save. And then there should be some enemies along here. I think. Yeah, I haven't figured out how we start the fight. If we want to start a fight, like, early. Do I just go in here and I then go, like... To take risks. You shoot? Who, if not me? I'll make an example out of you! Okay, yeah, I'll that is kind of how I start start. it, but, like, not completely. Argenta gets to go first. Uh, it seems like we're earlier in the turn order, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. That just means that it could have randomly rolled that earlier in the turn order. Adira. Let me go here for right now. Pascal. Here. And then I can't move you at all, and I hope that you don't die. Okay. Argenta. Um, does this guy go early? No, he goes very late. Fantastic. Shoot. The Two down already. That's Faith pretty good. Deeds is worthless. Okay. Uh, I can't shoot both of them, unfortunately. Can I shoot this guy? No. Okay. I still think this is probably the best move. It. Hey, we cleared him. Can I, I can't use Revel in uh, Slaughter until next turn. That's absolutely fine. We cleared three enemies in one turn. Those are some good, uh, odd. like, that's that's some good, um, yeah, that's a good amount to kill. That's not very high. I'll Let's do a uh, buff here to give us perfect spot. Still 38%, huh? Uh, I can potentially lower his stuff by exposing weaknesses. But that will cost me a lot. I think I'm, it might be worth it. Let's do this. I'll make it happen. So we'll hit you with one of those. As, yeah, we probably shouldn't have done this, but it didn't cost us anything, really. Right. It's as good then as let's done. just lower their stats. Wonderful. Let's go. You're running in. Hey, nice dodge. Ablard. Target is too close. Try Do this. The tactics are the best ones. Right, then hit him again. It will be done. Reduce to dust. Nice. Okay. Uh, then end turn. Adira, can you see this guy? Uh, with your sniper. No. Okay. Um. Well, that was a good turn then. <laughs> I don't want to use any psychic powers on this fight. See, this is what I'm saying with the psych with the psychic powers. I just have to leave them there. If we don't think it's going to be good for a fight, we just don't use them. 
Okay, has this guy got a turn? He has. What's he gonna do with it? Oh, you killed him again. He comes back each time, so that's fine. Um, hmm. Not sure what our plan is here. Guess it's going to be to move here and shoot, maybe. Let's move here. Yeah, let's just move here and shoot. Let's do this. Okay, was hoping for a little bit more, but that's fine. Uh, let's do one of these. Let's then lower all of his stuff. I should have done that first if I was going to do it. I understand. And then this one. Uh, yeah, let's do one of these on you. That's fine. Right. Cool. Argenta. Let's start with a revel. Doubt is for the weak. <laughs> let's go here. And let's shoot this person. The enemies of the Emperor will be undone. Each strike is a prey. Nice. Okay. I'll do Run it. and gun. Go a step over here. And take a shot. I will not. No line of sight? You serious? Okay, what about here and then shoot? Faith that would work. Oh, that is... Is, is that behind cover? It is, yeah, because she did the little move out thing. Okay, and then we can actually then, I I'll guess, do, do this to stare of danger. Okay, our turn. Um, Can't see them, huh? Move up. Can we see them here? We can. Perfect. So I want to move up. I'll buffer and um, ballistic skill. And then take a I'll shot. I'll make it happen. Well, okay. Ablard. I think this is your spot for this turn. Sound approach. Just a nice solid bit of cover. And then an endure. Adira, can you see these guys? You can. Perfect. Uh, let's do a little on uh, one of those. So we can now shoot and it will potentially do a lot of damage. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's not ideal. Okay. Didn't do that much damage. Uh, Argenta? Oh, it's Pascal first. Okay. Uh, move here. And... Pro yeah, move here, do this. Followed by lowering um, dodge. Followed by one of these. Yeah, one of these. Running by Derek Override. Okay. Hey, uh, and then we'll hit you with one of these. That's fine. Right, Argenta. Reload. Honestly, that's probably your turn. Uh, she can run out and get a shot, so maybe run out here. Shoot. God Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in my heart. And then move the back Emperor behind commands, this cover. I act. Okay. Uh, we can move up quite a bit if we want to. It'd be worth moving up here. Again, buffing our ballistics, which also buffs our cover efficiency, which is nice. And then taking a shot at you. Hey! Wonderful. A charge. Ooh, line of sight to target. Okay, what well, if you go here, then charge? There My place is at the fall. I took care of this one. Nice. Uh, and then probably Indeed. endure. Okay. Uh, I might put deflection on as well duty. here. A little brace for impact. Adira. Let's what put on course. some exploits. Let's then shoot with the sniper. Anything else? See if we can hit. We did. Nice. 
This guy gets a turn. Hits for zero, which is very nice uh, for us. He's completely... Some, something's happened to him. What, what's happened here? He got fresh injury. Okay. Fire. Okay. Uh, then we can use dismantling attack, I guess. Yeah, Activating and just do damage. Nice. And we did it. We didn't even get a new injury. What's this? Aha, my sight is true. My mind is clear. I see death. I see my future. Says this person. Rise okay. to the top or get left in the dust. Uh, we'll collect that. Um, yep, collect that. Anything else back here? Not on that side, this side? I don't like that our uh, private is also picking up um, a million and one um, injuries. Does this lead to the same warehouse, do you think? I always keep my options it might. open. Okay, tech use. You doing anything? Okay, you. Ready for dating, but... If we have to clear a path first. Okay. Then tech use. Yeah, there we Operation go. Ooh, officer's chain sword and then fortress world origin mesh, mesh vest. Which gives armor against range attacks and five toughness. Well, let's collect those. Uh, and let's have a look at what these do. So what does an officer's chain sword do? Most warriors prefer swords so they can provide more flexibility in the battlefield against close uh, combat enemies. Uh, so that seems like it's normal sword stuff. So let's have a look at your... Oh, you weren't, you're not even using a chainsword anymore. It's better than the shock baton. Um, yeah, it does more damage. How does it compare to the chainsword? That's probably the easiest way of seeing. Yeah, so it does two more damage than a chainsword. Okay, and has 5% more armor pen. Yeah, in which case, this is just better. Okay. A Fortress World Origin. Does anyone have a Fortress World Origin? Ah, Adira has a Fortress World Origin. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, it doesn't matter whether they have a Fortress World Origin, because that's just the that's just the world property. So what what was the negative? Why, why could nobody else use it? Is it heretical? You have to be a heretical follower. Oh, that was it. Okay, so this is going to make it so she has less dodge, but has much better armor and has a little extra toughness. An armor and an extra 5% armor against range attacks. That give her 35% armor. Is 35% armor better than 60% dodge? I don't think so. No, I think we're fine. Okay, let's do a save. Let's go see what this guy is talking about over here. A plan. Just a blind person. From your vantage point, it does not seem like this lavish mansion has been damaged by explosions. You cannot enter. Something is blocking the entrance from the inside. You know, honestly, sensible. To be made? Sensible. Okay, uh, what's this? Powerful explosion destroyed a large part of the bridge, both above and below. Could someone still be alive in there? Is this really just taking us straight in here? If it is, I'm just going to reload. Because but Because I recognize this area. I recognize this area very well. No, okay, but that I think probably would lead there. Okay. Let's see, return to the upper way. Rebel soldiers and ordinary workers, everyone perished under the rubble of the ruined bridge and buildings. Okay, I'll do another quick save. Grab all that junk. Leave the door for now. Where does this lead? Let us not dawdle. Searching is my intriguing. No! It's nothing. Flesh is weak. We're being shot by that thing? No okay. Pain. Over there. Always keep not your eye ideal. on the prize. Okay. This looks like the area we were in before, but I don't think it is. Grindless. You're the best at the demolition, so let's move you path. along here first. Uh, dismantle. Never doubt me. Okay. Dismantle. I better myself through my service. 
Yeah, what then this way. Us? Duty prevails. Keep okay, your grab the goods. You. Tech use. This hey. With Wonderful. Ooh, Lore Imperium. I always get These enormous the humming done. transformers must be part of a single, much larger mechanism that supplies power to the whole hive. Okay. Keep saving, like, diligently. This definitely looks like the other side of the warehouse, but... If it... Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Yep, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Don't care. Oh, is that over here? Ah, uh, I see, I see. You will beg for mercy. Uh, yeah. But I will grant We've been here before. <laughs> this is where we ended the previous episode, but we can come in from that angle, which is kind of interesting. And that is better. I wouldn't call it good, though. Alright, so that's where we are, and that's there. Okay, I understand now. I yeah, I bet if we open that door, we get open. the same cut seat, or we get the same thing that we got from the other side. Yeah, kind of what I thought we were getting down here. So there are two ways in here, so they definitely don't want you to miss it. Now, do I think we can beat it? No. But they definitely do not want you to miss that it's there. They're giving you two different routes, both of which lead into that. Yeah. But, what's very important is it's not... Is there um, money to be made? It, it's not... I'm trying to think of the right word. It's not mandatory for progression. Which means I think we can come back. It also has not told us that if we leave this area, we will not be able to return. I which is also good. I'm trying to think of how I... Like, Alcat games usually give you, like, a little bit of a... Yeah, you need to do this now if you need to do it now. Usually. Sometimes, on the other hand, they don't. But I think in this case... It's very much a we could Always head back. Keep your eye on the prize. Yeah, and it didn't give us anything there or anything. So I think we're fine. I mean, here's the thing. Whether we're fine or not, we can't beat it. And I have the choice then of reloading the entire planet or not. So I would prefer not to do that. Yeah, and we can head back. So in theory, we're fine. Maybe we'll get a punishment for doing it late. That I could see happening potentially, but we'll see. This, however, looks pretty good for us. Fight heresy, serve a higher purpose, safeguard humanity's dominion. Rise to the top. Okay, another blind mad woman dust. here. It's a solid. Oh, this could wild. be an opportunity. Okay, Argenta. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. I, up I just want Argenta. I don't know why it took so long to select her. Can you? Disarm this? A child yes. Was saved from death. A thousand heretics were burning alive, begging mm -hmm. and sobbing and howling. Wow, she is giving us a huge amount of a uh, lines of dialogue me. there. Okay. I better myself Get this through one. my service. The okay. Emperor I should open this today. so we can see. Oh yeah. Should open this so I can see uh, the XP that we're getting, and then this. Clearly oblivious to your presence, soldier mutters incoherently and does not react to anything around him. Okay. So this might be in safety, but we've got a bunch of, like, people who are a bit broken over here. Acquisition is possible. Ooh. Acquisition is possible. You're right. What is it? Ancient Terra Monocu uh, Monocle. Uh, the wearer's lore Imperium test depend on fellowship... Instead of intelligence, gain a plus three bonus. I think that would make them worse. For us, that would make them significantly worse. Anyone else got lower Imperium? Anyone else not wearing a head piece of headgear? Who has fellowship that's high? I mean, I guess this is yours, maybe? Like, I don't know. Maybe you can roll it. I don't know whether it rolls everyone or whether it just rolls the highest. I suspect it just rolls the highest. In which case, that it, it does nothing. But I'll just equip it to you so you have something equipped. I always keep my options open. Okay, let's head down here. Just continue investigating areas. See whether we get any perception checks. 
This mechanical door leads to lower levels of the upper way. I do not need to go to the lower Keep levels of the upper way. You. But let me just confirm that this takes me to the same place all the others take me. Okay. Does this go to the same place all the others go to, or does this just go to its own? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there is a way to get there from here as well, which implies a lot. As in, it definitely implies that this is probably, um... Yep. Implies that this is probably, uh... I always not, have a backup like, plan. missed at this point. Because, you know, if it was missed, then we couldn't go back to there so okay so we can also enter in from that side of the room potentially even better right I like that we could enter in from that side of the room because then we can um, yeah then we can kill all the cultists because they're on that side however still not that useful because <laughs> we still cannot actually do the damage wait did you get a, you got a fresh injury when did you get a fresh injury it's not waste time okay. with pleasantries. Uh, can you please heal? Can you please heal Ablard? Wait, you have a fresh injury as well? But when did you get your fresh injury? Wait a second. When did we get fresh injuries? I don't remember I you getting a fresh for injury. And a taste for adventure. Uh. Stop you. squirming. Ministration is a holy task. It has been healed. Oh, it might be when we were shot underground. Yeah, that's true. Uh, right. Let's um move a couple of these bags on here. Okay. Get to healing. Uh, Ablard. I need your full cooperation. Then get to healing. At its finest. Uh, Pascal. Wish you could select the ones at the top. It's much easier than clicking on them there. What's our chances here, by the way? Oh, it's a fresh injury, so there's no roll. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so we cured the fresh injuries. Which I didn't even notice we had. Oh, captives and rebels. Okay, something's happening up here. Hello, everybody. Some ten people, children among them, are huddling together in fear. The elder family members are doing what they can to calm the young. Several armed insurgents are watching the frightened hostages, but the watchers themselves are looking around nervously. Come to your senses, Arlid. Look what you're doing to your own family. A woman of about sixty, grey-haired but still strong, is kneeling before a stocky man with a thick, pure white beard stretching her arms towards him. Take pity on us. Let us go. Can't you see that I'm trying to save you? The man clutches his weapon tightly. Only Aurora can help us. Why can't you understand that? Upon seeing you, the man points his weapon at you. The other insurgents do the same. Who are you and what do you want? Um. Are all these people your family? All of my adopted and blood children are here. I raised them all as my own. Now I must protect them, help them see. Pascal's vox hisses furiously. Layperson, cognition is not your primary function. You are saving your kin by holding them at gunpoint and believe that burning their eyes will grant them sight. It is evident that the author of the demagogic teaching that confused you meant to make a mockery of your deplorable intellect. Abelard's face turns a deep red. To cast your own children into the thrall of heresy. To drown your progeny in this filth with your own hands. Hmm. What are you trying to save them from, and who is behind all this? At Aurora's behest. Aurora is a great prophet and a great warrior. Their face is shrouded, but their gaze pierces the veil of time and sees into the future. I always knew the governor's dogs were hiding the truth from us, and now the day has come. The prophet has come to Rykad Minoris and opened our eyes. The end of the world is coming, the final dawn, and only those who accept Aurora's truth will survive it. No, you tell me, who are you and what are you doing to these unfortunates? I'm the chief. 
My former name, Arlet, is meaningless now. I am a father leading his family to deliverance from woes, to salvation. Aurora has opened my eyes to the truth and my children will see it. Arlet, spare us, spare your children. Okay, we've got a couple of things that we can do here. We can use our iconoclast follower thing to say to say this is not salvation. You've been torturing your own family in order to save them. You've been blinding them so that you could see the truth. Or I order you to release the hostages. Let's try our, 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 our iconoclast thing. Uh, what you're doing is no salvation. Stop taking your fear out on the innocent. It will neither ease your suffering nor rid you of fear. But all I wanted to save... I... The man drops his weapon and covers his face with his hands in desperation. You hear several short sobs. The old woman rises from her knees and approaches her husband. I know you were trying to save us, but there's still a way to set things right. The old man gestures to the other insurgents who lower their weapons. He shifts his gaze to you, trying to hold back tears. What happens to... What happens to us now? Um... Hmm... Interesting. So with the previous lot, we did kill them. But if we're going to stick to Iconoclast, we want to go with the first one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. I guess the difference that is between the previous one and this one is potentially we believe that this guy probably had... Like, we have seen through... We have pierced the veil in a way, and we've shown him the truth, right? We've shown him that this is not the right thing to be doing. So potentially this is fine. We did hear the name the chief earlier, though, so he's potentially been uh, organizing these other groups. Okay. I don't know. I guess I'm just going to go with Icon at last. Your family may go, and so may you, but make sure I do not ever see you again. Let's do that. The hostages begin to leave, and soon the group disappears around one of the bends. The old man looks away from them and walks in the opposite direction. His shoulders shake with sobs every now and then. Oh. We've dispersed all the rebels. With one... Not very long speech. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. We're all in one piece. Everything will be alright, won't it? I hope I'm not making a mistake. Attention to detail is the key to success. Okay. I'm restless. Over here. Disarm the trap. Never doubt me. And then back this way. Around here. What's this? Join up at your hive's nearest Astra Militarum Nothing Mobile Conscription Center. Right. Oh, right. You discovered something down here. Go get it. Wait a second. Don't go get it. I just saw where it was. I thought it was in the previous area we were in. It was not. Okay. Is What's there this? Money to be made? The copper was haphazardly assembled from whatever the rebels could find. Okay. Let's work our way down here then. Quick save. Looks like there's another area at the end, but open. still nothing really here. Grab them. Again, it's just random goods. Okay. I'm happy for random goods. I would love to be able Rise to sell them to the one top, day. Or get left in the dust. All right. Perception check. No perception here? Interesting. Uh. Okay, so that's the way to the lower level that we spotted. Okay. That's fine. And then, at the other... Oh, that actually, it looks like this ends in a dead end at the end here. So it must be the other side is the way forward. Yeah. Just looking for any perception checks here. Don't see any, and that leads us to the command center. Okay. So I guess once we hit the command center, we're like... Always keep your done eye with on the, the initial price. part of this area, which would be lovely. You reckon they have a healer in the command center? That would, uh, be good. Do you reckon they have a shop in the command center? Now, that is asking for too much, but, like, a shop? A trader? Let Maybe. Us not okay. Um. Let's go. 
Just wait for that. Talk to the governor. Would love to. What's this? Formidable shells and large caliber weapons are being stored right in the command center. Also, we all leveled up, which is huge. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We get a new talent. Uh, what kind of stuff do I want? Just seeing here. Uh, I do like if you have no stacks of surefire plan, you gain one, but I don't think we need it yet. But that would be very useful for when we eventually start... Um, like, actually having long combats where you want to use that every turn. Be good. Or we could use it multiple times per turn, I guess, as well, if we wanted to. Uh, seeing what our options are. Hmm. High Vault characters get a 50% chance to dodge against the first attack of opportunity each round. Not needed. Gain extra MP if you're next to allies. Ranged weapons dealing physical damage have plus one damage, plus five armor penetration, plus one rate of fire, and minus five to recoil. What's the rate of fire of a sniper rifle? I assume one. Uh, let's have a look here. Rate of fire of a sniper rifle is one. So it would allow it to be two. What is rate of fire? I know it affects burst, but like, what is it? Doesn't say. Does it mean it would take shoot two shots? Probably not. It probably means if you have a burst one, you can shoot up to your rate of fire. Or if another thing triggers on rate of fire, then that would work. Yeah. Okay. So we might not want to take a hive world thing. What else have we got? Outnumber. Well, that is useful. That's the melee superiority one we've talked about, but we're not quite there yet. Um, I could buff a skill. I love buffing skills. They're great. But I do feel like eventually our character would suck if we kept doing that. Um, it will not die. Increase wounds by half of a character's level. No. Solid projectile attack skin plus two minimum damage. No. Nimble is okay. Extra dodge is not terrible. But like the problem with dodge is that we're basically saying... Yeah, let's buff something that we're not good at. Movement points. Uh, when we're in half cover, cover efficiency is increased by 15%. It's doubled if you haven't moved. That's kind of nice, actually. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, the enemy with the largest number of exploits receives an additional exploit stack. If two or more enemies are tied, one of those enemies is chosen at random. Operatives allies gain operatives int bonus divided by 2% hit chance. So that would be 5 divided by 2, which would be 2% hit chance and critical hit chance while attacking targets affected by exploits. That seems like a thing that could scale. Sniper experience. Uh, so we needed perfect sh a spot to get this. What was perfect spot? I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, perfect spot. Oh, that's the one that that's the one that we literally just took. The one that means that we um, increase our ballistic skill. Uh, additionally, grants operative five plus perception bonus, which is currently four percent armor penetration against enemies that are seven cells away or farther. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay, so when an operative attacks a target affected by an exploit from a distance of 15 minus percentage, uh, not percentage, perception cells or farther, so that would be 11 cells or farther, the attack deals plus 15% damage. I mean, that's cool, but like you have to be really far away. Um, inflicts exploit even on enemies which are out of an operative's line of sight at the start of a turn. So that just gives you an extra insight, oh, sorry, an extra exploit on every enemy. Yeah, okay. I mean, that could be nice. You're not moved, you gain ballistic skill and an int bonus divided by two damage for every five cells between them and the target. Okay. That's uh, two extra damage per five cells. Uh, while the operative's perception bonus is ten or higher, like, let's not be silly. There's no point in taking that. Um, okay, if an... Enemy is affected by an exploit within five cells from the operative, attacks the operative or their allies, the enemy suffers 
one additional exploit. Uh, the operative suffers minus three in three times int bonus, which is 15% less damage from enemies affected by exploits. I mean, that one sounds like that would be really good if you also had just used Uncanny Sight. Right? The operative inflicts an exploit, even on enemies which are out of the operative's line of sight at the start of the turn. Yeah, and then you take offensive pattern prediction afterwards. Let's mark that one, and let's take Uncanny Sight. I think that seems good. Yeah. I think that seems good. Then we get to choose a common talent. Okay, so this is more... These are the generic talents. Okay, instead of an operative-based one, these will be other stuff. Enemies not getting melee superiority against you is cool. Additional movement actually is quite nice. Let's just take additional movement. I think we're going to need it at some point. This is as good as time as any to take it. Right? Ablard. Okay, so you get a skill. You already have Carouse improved, so we can choose to improve Athletics, which is based on Strength, Coercion, which is Fellowship, Dem Demolition, which is Agility, or Medicaid, which is Intelligence. Um, I think Athletics makes a lot of sense to me, personally. Uh, I think Strength is your best one out of these. Is that That probably is right. Your base is 35. Okay. Your base is 40. Yeah, so let's go athletics on that one. And then you get a talent. Okay. Uh, did I mark any? I probably didn't mark any. I should get bit into the habit of marking which ones I want, if I want one. Maybe I just had none that I wanted. That's the other problem. Um... I like gaining damage deflection as a base, and parry chances increased by total armor. That I think could be really good, right? Like, that could start stacking quite a lot and be very, very good for taking less damage. Uh, you have less than 50% wounds, you gain 5 plus toughness bonus plus agi bonus percent critical hit chance. Hmm, okay. Uh, damage built by charge is increased by toughness bonus plus strength bonus. So that would normally be... Uh, 35, 45, 55, 65. So that would be 6 plus 4. So that would be 10 extra damage. And ability is used from a distance of 5 or more cells. Yeah, that's the problem with it. Um, okay. That's... I'm just seeing these. These are all fine. I think, actually, I quite like Thick Skin. Let's just take Thick Skin. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be better than we think it's going to be. Oh, you can actually see the effects immediately on the side. Look at that. So it puts you up to 76% uh, parry, and then it gives us one damage off, like, whenever we rotate damage. Which is quite nice. Okay. Cool. Dira, you get the same stuff that we got. Do you get a talent followed by a um, common talent? Um, let's see here. Maybe I want to give you some stuff that you can use while you're not casting spells. Origin talents. Um, let's see here. Stronger together. Char it gives all allies, excluding Xenos, the current in the current party, the same characteristic that was chosen for humanity's finest. Is that willpower? So give everyone five willpower. Um, makes your uh, makes your uh, psychic powers cheaper after triggering psychic phenomena or perils of the warp for the first time each turn. I mean, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> doesn't sound good at all it would just mean that we use more uh yeah no any of these good the half cover one is nice i think it's just generally good i also think uncanny sight potentially is really good we can just start stacking exploits across the entire combat if i understand this Maybe we just take this and we just start stacking exploits. Like, just across everybody. Because exploits give us um, 
Actually, I should be able to see it in here, shouldn't I? Because uh, I should be able to do this. Yeah, so an exploit means that when you hit the target, you deal 5 times perception bonus, which is currently on this one, um, 4, so for 20% more damage. And it's increased by 10% for each exploit on the target. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Right? Especially if we can get 2 on every enemy at the start of combat, or like the start of each turn. So if you have 2, that means that Adira would be doing, in theory, 30% more damage when she hits a target. That's a very reasonable increase. Let's take on Canny Sight. Maybe I'm going crazy, but I think that's good. And then here, um, I don't know. Well, what have we got down here? We got some Psy rating stuff, which you can't take until you're a higher level. Um, obscured threat. Yes, these are all psychic power stuff. Um. Okay, so, yeah, that's not going to help us. Increases range, increases damage, decreases veil degradation when you use a heroic thing. Um, yeah, I don't know, I do like uh, increasing range, I think that gives you a lot of benefit, potentially. It kind of fits the sniper thing that we are kind of moving her into. Maybe we give her extra range on all of her psychic abilities. Is that second sight? Yeah. Let's give extra range. I think that potentially could be really good. Right. Now we have Argenta. Argenta gets the same thing. So what's rapid reload? Reloading costs 2 AP less. First reload in combat does not cost AP. Very nice. That is very nice. Uh, if a soldier deals damage to three different enemies, the soldier gains 10 plus 2 times ballistic skill bonus percent. So that is 20% more damage for their next attack in the current combat. Reach adjacent ally doesn't happen too often, so let's not worry about that. Um, whenever the soldier deals critical damage, when deals damage, their critical damage is increased by 1% until the end of combat. Again, pretty good. What's exploit? Oh, I already have that one. And I already have that one. Okay. Um, enemies damaged by this soldier's area attack suffer 1 plus ballistic skill bonus divided by 2 damage for the next attack that hits them. Okay. Um, while at full wounds, let's not worry about that. Oh, we're just going to take this one. Whenever we successfully dodge or use cover against an enemy's attack, they gain a guaranteed critical hit against that enemy. Yeah. Okay, I was going to take that, so let's take it. Next, uh, I want Demolition. Easy. It's the only thing you're good at, so we might as well make you good at it. Right. Uh, and then we have yet another one of these. Now, you already have Uncanny Sight, don't you? Uh, that's one of your feature, uh, feature talents. As if you don't. Like, I can tell you what you're getting. Is it instant exposure? No. Uh, it randomly distributes this. On the first turn of combat, the operative randomly distributes the same number of exploits when using analyze enemies. Ah, right. So you actually do a bunch more. At the start of each of the operative subsequent turns, they distribute half as many exploits among all enemies in a two cell radius around the operative. Okay. I think uncanny. Maybe I'm completely misunderstanding this, but I think uncanny uh, sight is still good. The operative inflicts an exploit, even on enemies which are out of the operative's line of sight at the start of turn. It's just stacking more exploits, I think. I could be wrong, but I think it's just stacking more. I think that could potentially be really good. And then here, what have we got? Don't need to use that. Um, in a stacking hit chance and dodge reduction against any targets they hit with a single target attack. Uh, successful critical hits from single target attacks increase that. Okay. Uh, three deflection against burning effects and flame weapons. 
Um, yeah, you had a lot of stuff that was like, use this type of weapon, and I was like, okay, at some point, maybe. Um, okay. Advanced skill tech use. Gains 13 tech use can also reroll failed skill t tests. Plus one attempt for each test. That would give you really good um, stuff there. It will not die. Increases wounds. Nimble is good. Swift movement is good. You know what? Swift movement was is actually probably great for Pascal. Because he's often just like not in combat. <laughs> right? Like often we're like, well he's not quite close enough to go into melee. But he's not really good at range. So he just kind of sits there. I think that would be good. I think for the same reason it's good on us. Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. And now we're going to walk in. You're, si you're safe here, your lordship. What's this little... Is there some kind of psychic thing happening here? Or is it just heat? I think it's just heat. Is there money to be made? What are all these enforcers and soldiers doing in this shelter? Why are they not on the streets fighting back the enemies of humanity? Let's just wait for this to uh, finish in case somebody else has something to say. So that was Argenta saying that. Give us a long time on that tool, on that uh, pop-up. I presume it's because the governor does not wish to be without his personal guard even behind the meter-thick walls of his bunker. Typical. That's Pascal? No, that is Ablard. Okay, that's who I thought was saying it, but then I saw this being over his head. Okay, and then the... These are done in twos. Okay. Cool. Not a lot of named people here, interestingly. That might be a healing station. I don't know what that is, but maybe it's a healing station. I say optimistically. Hello. Governor. The tall, dark-skinned man turns towards you and greets you in a curt military manner. Bye, Sal. Reich Abde Abd Medine Af Koranas, governor of this star system. Welcome to my temporary headquarters. Man's gaze falls on Abelard, his eyes slightly narrow. Versarian? Abelard nods dryly. Governor Medina, my greetings. I'm not seeing the convoy I'd sent to meet you. What happened? That they fail to find and escort you? If that is so, I promise you their punishment will be swift and severe. Um. Okay. What a curious exchange of pleasantries. Is there some kind of discord between you and Abelard? No, of course not. An old misunderstanding. Over a century old by now. Isn't worth your time, Lord Captain. Over a century old by now? You're over a century old, Abelard? Looking good for your age. The convoy was ambushed. There were no survivors except Private Camille Regius. I must commend his extraordinary loyalty and resilience. Only one good soldier in a whole convoy. Pathetic. Head to the barracks, Private, and await new orders. Your Lordship, before we proceed with discussing the matters that are of interest to you, there is a question I feel compelled to ask. It was only recently that Lady Theodora was head of House Von Valancius. I received no word of her demise. How is it that you are now the rogue trader? Um. Well. Let's see what we're going to say here. I'm not going to say three. Three makes us sound guilty as hell. Our ship was attacked, she was killed, and I claimed my inheritance. That makes us sound guilty. My esteemed predecessor died at the hands of cultists. May the Emperor incinerate their soul. Not so much. Uh, so I guess it has to be two. I should be the one asking that question. Our ship was attacked by heretics. They killed Lady Theodora. The governor frowns and a deep shadow falls over his face. Rogue trader Von Valancius, slain, unthinkable. Please accept my deepest, most sincere condolences, your lordship. Do not hesitate to let me know how I might be of help. Well, let's try a little commerce talk, shall we? I need fresh crew to replace those killed in the attack on the ship, and I need material compensation. The governor bows his head in acceptance. Of course, your lordship. 
that you will be compensated for any losses, and I'll see to it personally that your ship's holds are filled with the finest goods from my personal reserves. Hey, we gained profit factor. Wonderful. I don't know what that does for us, but we've gained it. Abelard nods in approval and remarks quietly, Excellent, your lordship. A rogue trader has no use for leniency. I can offer you several thousand fine, obedient servants. However, I'm sad to inform you that I won't be able to do it until we've dealt with the insurgency on the planet. I'm sure you won't have to wait long. The rabble will soon be duly punished for their heretical scheming. Okay. We've got many questions to ask. Let's go for the top one, I think. Um... Are you so confident you will crush the insurrection soon? My own impression is that it has been the exact opposite. Is that so? <laughs> the governor maintains his composure. I'd like to hear your reason. Uh, I'd like to hear your reasoning. The insurgency is headed by a certain Aurora, a prophet who, according to their followers, possesses mystical powers. The rabble's usual superstitions. I'm sure this Aurora is a charlatan muttering some doggerel which their dim followers think to be magic spells. This does, of course, warrant their eventual burning in the furnace of penance, but it does not point to there being anything special about this insurgency. Ah, so that's why we have to go to the warehouse, because we have to find something special. I understand. I see it's not my power to convince you. Let us change the subject. Of course. Okay. Is there anything I can do on this planet or in the system while I wait for the end of the revolt? There is the Navis Nobleite station in the system, but those hermits don't do business with anyone. Not even I have been invited on board. However, they've been known to make exceptions for members of the road trader families. Maybe they will make one for you. If you'd like a distraction, a smaller and safer uprising to suppress at your leisure, there's a planetoid in my system called Rykadi Philia. It hosts a prison colony whose inmates rebel at the same time as the heretics on the planet. It's an all-round preposterous situation. It should only have taken us a couple of orbital shots to take care of them, but the governor slightly purses his lips. Evane Winterscale went there. He is a relative of my suzerain, the, the great rogue trader Caligos Winterscale, uh, the master of this system and a dozen others. I imagine this young Lord Winterscale is very eager to prove himself to his distinguished kinsmen. I see no reason for you not to join him. It's a small planetoid, the prisoners' numbers are few, and they have little in the way of weapons. It's more of a sport for noble lords than a real rebellion. Vain, vain, Ablard mutters, stroking his beard. One of his distant, younger offspring, yes. Uh, that's as much as I know about him. Which means he hasn't distinguished himself in any meaningful way. Um. Okay. I wish to commend the courage of one of your officers, Sergeant Malgar. He and his soldiers valiantly defend the starport. The sergeant who managed to impress a person of such noble standing will be recommended for decoration. Hey, we're doing great work for all of these people we've met. Um, my kinsman, Kunrad Voigtvir von Valancius, has betrayed our dynasty and the Imperium. If he is hiding in the system, I want him handed over to me. Voigtvir is a traitor. Why, any family, however noble, has an unworthy scion or two. Naturally, we will surrender him, should we find him, within my jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I have no information regarding his location. However, the governor pauses to think. We have a cogitator here at the command center. It's connected to a data crypt from Logis Abel's Sanctum. It aggregated all the Lex Mechanic reports. Unfortunately, the access prayer for it is unknown to me. If you manage to convince the stubborn machine, you might learn something about Kunrad's movements. I had hazard he fled from you on a ship, not on a pair of wings. Okay. Um, a low-ranking tech priest is Lex Mechanicus. A data crypt is a data repository sanctified by the Adaptus Mechanicus to be used in conjunction with a cogitator. And then we know what the cogitator is, it's a digital computer. Henrix von Kallox, an, an interrogator in the Most Holy Inquisition, is operating in your system. Do you know where he is? The governor lowers his voice. I do. Master van Kallox has left for the hallowed electrodynamic Cenobium. It's an ancient monastery of the Adaptus Mechanicus. I don't know what his objectives are. Needless to say, insurgent activity has been observed in the monastery's vicinity. 
but I suppose that's too petty of a problem for an agent of the most holy inquisition. Besides, I've already sent a small detachment of reinforcements there. Unfortunately, right now you won't be able to leave the capital to set out to look for him. Rebels have got hold of some ancient weapon and have made flying over the city impossible. That's all I wanted to discuss. Destroy the ancient anti-aircraft battery? Fail? Whoa, what do you mean fail? Whoa, 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 what do you mean fail? Um, show completed quests? Um, I didn't see an ancient anti-aircraft battery, unless that was the bit that we had to get to on the way here. Yeah, so we haven't done that quest yet. Destroy the ancient aircraft battery. Uh, okay. If it was captured by the rebel were to be destroyed, the Lord Captain would be able to reach the command center on a shuttle, bypassing the dangers lying in wait on the city streets. Did we see the ancient anti-aircraft battery? Maybe that was what was in the warehouse? Maybe. But were we able to reach the command center on a shuttle? Maybe that was an option that was unavailable to us for some reason? I does say reach the upper way, so it must have been that bit underground. But then we still have destroy the uh, anti-aircraft battery, right? As a quest. Yeah, we still have that as a quest, so... I don't know. Yeah, we still have to go and destroy it, so that's fine. Whatever. Um, did we not have to bring um, Pascal here? I, always have a backup plan. I thought he wanted to go to the governor. Did it not just literally say that? Escort him to the governor. Okay. You are authorized. Uh, wish to discuss the insurgency. Okay. Maybe I need to speak to you, to Quartz Cram. The painfully thin tech priest turns sharply towards you. The sun movement makes his chromed augment augmetics briefly clang. His grey eyes set under furrowed brows almost blend into the pale skin of his face and he levels you with a heavy dour stare. Identification. Unit Logis Quartz Cram. Official trade representative of the Explorator Cognizant Fleet. This unit supervises supply routes in the RICAD system, ensures the security of the combat arsenal, performs commercial transactions, and secures mutually beneficial contracts. When the tech priest noticed Pascal, his eyes widen. His Vox unit immediately lets out a string of screeching Beinharic, a torturously long tirade in which the volume rises and falls seemingly at random. When it is finally over, the Omnissiah's servant bows his head in deference. Unit Quartz Cram requests permission to transfer information. The rogue trader possesses a supreme degree of power, the potential to influence the current leadership, the ability to restore order in the RICAD system. Pascal, what was that? A detailed complaint. I recommend you consider Unit Quartz Cram's request to transfer information. Okay, permission to transfer information granted. What do you wish to tell me? The tech priest says sharply and curtly, Haphazard and careless decisions on the part of Rykad Minoris's uh, governor have led to unacceptable conditions. Communication with the Adeptus Mechanicus Sanctum has been lost. Troops must be sent to the hallowed electrodynamic Cenobium without delay. Restoring communication with the Electro Priests and ensuring the Sanctum's security are our top priorities. You are the head of a rogue trader dynasty. Your position enables you to exert influence the tech priest pauses for a moment, and pressure on subjects of the Imperium. Unit Quartz Cram requests assistance. The actions of Governor Fasal Raikad Ab Menid Af Koranus must be influenced. Demand that troops be sent to the Holy Monastery of the Adeptus Mechanicus. I observe that this world's authorities lack diligence in the performance of their duties. This statement is true. United in their Denouncement, er, denunciations and brimming with righteous criticism, the pair in red exchange knowing nods. Um, I will discuss it with the governor. Unit Quartz Cram is grateful. The rogue trader is highly likely to succeed, uh, to successfully influence the future actions of the local authorities. 
You're an explorator, are you, aren't you? What are you doing here? Retrieving archive data. Over 70 Terran years ago, the governor of Rykad Minoris and authorized representatives of the Explorator Cognitant's fleet made an agreement. Its goal was mutual benefit through cooperation. Unit Logis Quartz Cram is the fleet's appointed trade agent. The unit is responsible for maintenance of the arsenal and the combat machinery. Blessed are the armorers, for there can be no Imperium without them. Blessed are the valiant warriors, for there is no end to darkness without them. Um, the Omnisaya's servants exchange short Binharic mantras filled with intimidating solemnity. Um, what is the Cognizance fleet doing in the Rykad system? The Cognizance fleet's uh, presence in the Rykad system is negligible. Its research activities in the system have been concluded. A limited presence is maintained for the purpose of logistical support. Fulfillment of vows to maintain the Omnisaya's creations. Spiritual oversight. Show me your arsenal. I accept the commercial transaction. Profit factor is a measure of your status, wealth, and power as a rogue trader. Its value is determined by your trade connections, income of your holdings, treasury, and loans both to and from you. The value for profit factor is displayed at the bottom right of the inventory screen. While traveling, your character will use profit factor for buying items and compelling colonial and completing colonial projects. Profit factor is not spent on purchases and transactions. Instead, its level determines your ability to conclude trade transactions. Profit factor can grow or diminish. Its growth is primarily influenced by major trade deals and it decreased by investments in colonial projects. Equipment, weapons, and other items can be found at vendors of various factions throughout the Coronas Expanse. To trade with them, profit factor and reputation are required. They are not spent on purchases, but their level, one or both at once, affect the range of goods available to you. Reputation is a measure of the rogue trader's relationship with the various factions of the Coronas Expanse. The higher the reputation of a faction, the wider the range of goods available from its representative. To increase the reputation with a particular faction, complete their orders and transfer valuable cargo to their representatives. Okay, so I can see at this level we can buy multi-keys and we can buy an Analyst Helmet. When a wearer kills a target with an exploit using a single or dead eye shot, the nearest enemy immediately gains one exploit. Ooh, that's very nice. What does that cost? So that costs us seven of that, but what is that? Uh, does this just, or does this mean we have to have seven of this? What, what would this, how much does this cost? Does this cost us seven or? It just told us that we didn't have it. Total value 12, available 12, initial 10. Can I? Okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna quick save. Hello. I didn't lower my profit factors. So that must have cost me something, right? Or can I just have these? Are these free? What is it costing me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that cost me. Do I have income? Do I have... I have no money. Are these free? Is that what these are? Is these just free? I purchased them with funds, I guess. I, I guess, wait, I don't have income. I just realized there is no currency. I think I understand. We are purchasing, purchasing these with... Story money. Right? We're purchasing these with narrative money. Right? So our character is extremely rich. They're a rogue trader. They have piles of cash. They could buy whatever they want to buy. However, they need access to things to buy them. I think I understand. So this is more like a invest in this to get these things kind of thing. Rather than a... Uh, you're actually buying this for X amount of money. So we could then sell some of these things to gain extra rep. This extra rep may allow us to unlock the next level. Like, so if we got a rep level and got up to level one, we could then get the psychic bodied love because we are now just like, because we are now um, at rep level one. Oh. And in fact, if I was to get to rep level 2, or even rep level 3, I could get all sorts of things. Right? 
even though it's a higher rep level needed to get these. Oh, I see. Interesting. So how much could I sell these for? Can I see in theory, like this? So they won't buy everything either. So these guys won't buy any of that. Yeah, okay, so they'll only buy, they won't buy melee weapons or ship components, but they will buy armor kits. So we could get f um, 5,800 here, which would then allow us to potentially get up to like all sorts of levels. So let me just try this here. So let's clear the selection. I'm going to sell you a bunch of these things. Oh, I can't sell that one. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to sell you exactly 1,500. So I'm going to trade. So that moves me to level 1. Level 1 means I can now buy these. But by buy, it means I can now take these. Huh. Interesting. It's odd. But I don't hate it. Right? Yeah. You also maybe got a plasma pistol if we wanted to, but let's not worry about that. Okay. Well, I'm happy to stick with what we did, but... Interesting. So now I have a psychic bodied love, which is obviously for you. Right? Same dodge. Well, it's not same dodge. You would actually lose five dodge due to the agility changing. But... You would get... Better armor. Is your willpower more than 40? Of course it is. So you get 3 times Psy rating, which is 1 percent dodge, so you would get... Okay, so you're going to get 3% dodge, so you would you're going to lose 2% dodge overall from this. But you also ignore the first critical hit uh, in combat. Okay. There we go. We got this, which is very useful for us, although we have the logic goggles on, so maybe this is for you now? When you kill a target with an exploit using a single or dead eye shot, the nearest enemy immediately gains one exploit. There we go. Definitely looking <laughs> exactly like uh, Talas always looks. Uh, not at all a bit weird. You can use a bolter, so can you use these modified bolters? Yeah. Is it any better than your current bolter? Also, this one has a worse rate of fire. Okay. So this is the same as the bolter that you have. Oh, except it does more damage. Yeah, so your modified bolter is better than unfading valor, which just sounds very cool, but, you know. This is just straight up better. Okay. Um, Is this better than this one? 5% dodge if the wearer's agility is more than 40%, but this would also give you 5% dodge because this gives you extra agility, so this is going to end up better. So instead of 95 dodge, you're going to end up with 95 dodge, except you also then get the 10% parry. Is that right? Oh, and the better armor from it. Wait, no, worse armor? It's worse armor, I see. That must be why we took it off in the first place. Yeah, we could let you get better agility, but let's not worry about that here. Maybe this is for you then? No, because you have your own thing. Okay, yeah. Could be for us. Uh, I mean, the extra agility wouldn't hurt, necessarily. Um, it would give us extra dodge. We don't really need the armor. Let's give that to us. Let's wear this. Okay. I'm going to save. I don't want to talk to too many more people, Keep but I do want to see what this you. is. What is this? The cogitator looks a lot older and more worn than the ones next to it. However, it's been evidently well cared for. Numerous parts have been replaced, not a single key is jammed, and fresh seals with prayers to the Omnisire adorn its surface. One of the side panels has been removed. Bundles of gold-notched cables run from inside to a small data crypt that was connected only a short while ago. Awaiting access code. I'm going to leave that. I'm really looking for a healer. That's really the only thing I'm looking for in here. There is no healer. We are in extreme trouble. I think we are in extreme trouble. What's this? Heavy chains are used to adjust the height of the command platform. 
Oh, no, no, no. We are in extreme trouble. Because I think the only thing we can do is go back to the place that we were at before. Wait, unless this leads somewhere. Wait, where does this lead? Can we go up here? No, a solitary young tech priest is offering ceaseless prayers to the machine spirits in the command center. Oh, no. Well. Well, well, well. We are in major trouble. Because next time, we have to do this, but we also then have to try and beat the fight that we failed. Oh, no. I'm trying to think how we would even succeed. I guess we have to destroy the lens using the narrative destruction, then blow up the thing separately using our weapons, then try and kill every weak thing possible, and then just hope that we win? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.